Jetzt. Hallo liebe Leute, herzlich willkommen zu unserem äh, Stream. Mit uns meine ich Evil Jared, live zugeschaltet aus Amerika, aus USA. Hallo Jared, wie geht's dir? Hallo, uh, gut, gut. Aber uh, seit ich letzte Mal in Europa war, es gibt es große Probleme da, ja? Ja, du hast... Äh, vor, ja, es gab... Uh, things have gone downhill even further. Yeah. And uh, yes, we have a lot of problems over in Ukraine, so we are going to see what we can do to help them out. Joining uh, me today is, of course, Michael Krogwin, this being his channel and all. That's right. Uh, also joining us, we are going to have some guests from Ukraine, Julia Hiss, who has joined us for uh, earlier by Beer Pong. Yeah. Uh, uh, last year, the year before, she will be joining us. She is of Ukrainian heritage and can translate for us. We will also be uh, we've joined by our friend Elvis, who is on the ground in the suburbs of Kiev. Uh, Elvis uh, worked for a promoter that I met him when we were touring in Kiev, and he has stayed there uh, during the bombings. He will be go coming on here to tell us exactly what is going on on the ground there, and as well as our friend Antje, who makes regular runs, I think two, three times a week, to deliver supplies from Berlin to the Ukrainian border and to deliver refugees back from Berlin. Uh, they will be able to tell us what is going on, maybe something that you're not seeing in the media. I don't know where most people are getting their information from. I get it mostly from uh, from Facebook and Twitter. I try sure, to yeah. mm -hmm. news because in America, the news is very, very biased. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily as biased as in, um, for example, Russia, but we do have one channel over here that seems very much like the, the Russian propaganda channel. <laughs> Yeah, you are right. Um, Jared, before we get deeper into in the conversation, I, I would like to introduce in German the view, to the viewers and point out what my feelings are, because uh, it's not the common Krogman stream here. Uh, usually I'm, I'm a happy guy and I don't uh, yeah, talk politics and stuff and because I'm... Never discuss politics. Yeah, that's right. Never once. And over we we did we did we streamed together beer pong over a year. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we ever once discussed politics, no matter what crazy crap was going on in America. That's right. That's right. And for, 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 for that entire time, I believe we had a reality show president. And yeah. We managed to resist talking about politics then. Yeah. But I think the, the situation has gotten too crazy to avoid now. Yeah, and it's it's not about it's not talking about politics it's about yeah human behavior you know that we stick together as uh, as people and yes. therefore it's important that we that we yeah do our job in supporting people and i will switch to german and uh, yeah ich heiße euch erstmal willkommen schön dass ihr da seid ihr lieben wir machen heute wie gesagt ein support stream ich finde es halt cool dass uh, jared darauf bock hat sowas zu machen und dass wir beide eigentlich da auch sehr, sehr ähnlich denken und einfach sagen, ey, wir beide sind eigentlich irgendwie Entertainer und haben gar keinen Bock drauf, uns mit irgendeiner Scheiße zu beschäftigen. Aber es ist jetzt gerade so, dass Weggucken auch nichts hilft. Und vor allen Dingen, wenn man halt ähm, Leute hat, die irgendwie leiden und irgendwie keine gute Zeit haben, ganz offensichtlich, dann ist das Mindeste, was man machen kann, ja zumindest mal einen Stream machen, um darüber zu erzählen, was abgeht und Leuten quasi Gehör zu verschaffen und dann auch Spenden zu sammeln, um vielleicht damit was zu verbessern. Das ist sozusagen die Idee heute. Das heißt, wir werden jetzt miteinander reden, aber nicht nur Jared und ich. Also wir werden nicht euch erzählen, wie wir das finden, sondern Jared hat Gäste besorgt. Ähm, eine Übersetzerin wird dabei sein. Dann wird es auch noch zwei, drei andere Leute geben, die dann auch in, in der Ukraine vor Ort sind. Jared hat ein Video besorgt von Leuten und wir werden halt auch herausfinden und rausstellen, was die Leute gerade brauchen sozusagen, weil ich sehe gerade schon mal der, die, den Spendencounter. Jared, it's, it's unbelievable. We already got 746 Euros, uh, which is kind of crazy. I mean, the show is not uh, started uh, <laughs> and <laughs> we got those money. That is, that is cool. And um, yeah, we must point out clearly what we want to do with the money and uh, what is, yeah, we, we must um, uh, make sure that it's kind of That the transparency is 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 there, yeah, and uh, the the idea is that we will ask the people, the Ukrainian people, what they need, and Jared did that beforehand, and they pointed out that they need body armor and helmets and stuff, and. I bet I did not ask every single Ukrainian. That is right, Jared. That is that is right. I'm I'm sure. But the Ukrainian people that I asked were all uh, unanimous in saying that what is most desperately needed there is uh, for the soldiers who are, are are bravely defending 
the uh, bravely defending their their cities over there, and you know, not to, not to go out and and bash Russia or anything. This is not a same, stream. Same yeah. with me, yeah. But this is a stream. You know, this is not to, to accuse Putin of anything or you know. That no, no. In other places, all we are here to do is support the Russian, the, the Ukrainian people who are trying to defend themselves. And when they're trying to open up humanitarian quarters and the quarters are being bombed. Then obviously, it's obvious to me which which army needs to be supported because they're not trying to attack anyone. All they're trying to do is protect their civilians. And a lot of these Ukrainians are out there doing it in flannel shirts and baseball caps. Mm-hmm. And that is no way. That's no way to go up against soldiers that are, that are fully armed and armored. So we are going to be spending 100% of this money on body armor and helmets, which is as far as I know is what is desperately needed. Krogi, do we have a? Uh, we're about a half hour into the stream now, and uh, I want to start bringing guests in because yeah, come and make them. Come and make them. Leave uh, pretty quickly. So yeah, can we bring in. Like I'd like to bring in. I was going to do this in another in a different order before. Yeah, I would like I wanted to bring in the Ukrainians first, but I know Anja, who has been doing the uh, the the deliveries of supplies from Berlin to the border is going to have to leave soon. So I want to see if I can bring her in uh, first. Yeah, okay. okay. Awesome, yeah. Okay. Ja Leute, das ist äh, einfach eine krasse Situation und ich finde es halt irgendwie schön, dass, dass Gerald das gerade so in die Hand nimmt und sagt, ey, wir können hier, wir kennen, kennen Leute und wir können das irgendwie direkt so machen und wir können Leute unterstützen. Und was meine Erfahrung ist, ich habe auch noch mal ein paar anderen Leuten gesprochen, die gerade auch aktionistisch unterwegs sind und einfach äh, supporten wollen und so, ähm, weil ja auch oft gesagt wird, die brauchen Nahrungsmittel dort vor Ort und so weiter. Ich kann das nicht beurteilen, ich bin nicht da gewesen, aber die Menschen, die jetzt da waren, sagten, naja, Nahrungsmittel gibt es viele, es ist vorhanden und vor allen Dingen, es muss erstmal wegorganisiert werden. Das heißt, was wir jetzt machen, ist ein bisschen anders gelagert, aber es ist okay. Hi. Okay, so joining us now, Anja, this is Krogi. Uh, Hi. Yeah, Hi. Is, uh, yes, Anja is doing, uh, I think the, uh, I mean, I don't want to bring religion, but she's, she's doing God's work. She is bringing directly supplies, donation supplies directly from Germany to the border to get them directly into the hands of the Ukrainians. Awesome. Antje, you're speaking German as well, is that right? Yeah, or English, I don't mind. Whichever. Okay, cool, because uh, in the live stream, most of the people are uh, Germ Germans right now, I think. Therefore, okay. if, yeah. you, if you, uh, it would be cool if you could give us uh, two, three, four sentences about you and what you're doing, because then we, have, uh, we are matched. Ja, okay. Ähm, ich bin am 27.02. mit einem Kumpel an die polnische Grenze gefahren, also an die ukrainische Grenze in Polen, um einfach zu schauen, wie die Lage aussieht. Wir haben dann schnell gesehen, dass die großen Organisationen noch nicht vor Ort waren und dass die Stadt sich komplett alleine über Volontäre organisiert, dass ein Riesenchaos war. Wir haben dann erstmal angefangen, den Bahnhof durch Spenden mit ähm, Nahrungsmitteln zu beliefern, damit die Leute, die in den Zug kommen, auch einfach was zu essen in der Hand haben. Mhm. Dann haben wir schnell gesehen, dass auch ähm, Leute einfach weggebracht werden müssen und haben uns mit einem Berliner Busunternehmen zusammengetan, haben nach drei Tagen dann unsere ersten Busse mit insgesamt 60 Leuten von der Grenze nach Berlin geschickt ähm, und zum weiteren Verlauf mit einem weiteren Team, Taxi for Peace nennen die sich, wir nennen uns einfach Machen, zusammengetan sind jetzt 20 Kernleute und machen in Summe folgendes, wir fahren weiterhin Busse von Polen nach Berlin und äh, Deutschland. Wir fahren aber auch richtig über die Grenze in die Ukraine rein mit kleinen Transportern und Autos und holen Notfälle raus. Also Leute von uns suchen tatsächlich vor Ort nach Verletzten, nach alten Leuten, nach Müttern mit Kindern und holen die aus ähm, Notsituationen über die Grenze nach Polen. Und dann sorgen wir dafür, dass sie in Sicherheit kommen und auch Gastfamilien finden. Und wir fahren Busse ähm, und äh, Lkw-Ladungen mit Hilfsgütern entweder zur Grenze oder mittlerweile auch direkt in die Ukraine nach Lviv. Wir haben es wirklich geschafft, dass wir da Sondergenehmigungen auch kriegen können, ähm, liefern das direkt dort aus und treffen uns zum Beispiel, wenn nötig, in Lviv mit ähm, Leuten aus der Ukraine, die dann zum Beispiel vor ein paar Tagen die Sachen nach Tscharkow bringen, was ähm, komplett in der russischen Grenze ist, wo einfach ähm, fast nichts mehr zu essen mittlerweile vorhanden ist dringend benötigt wird. Und das Letzte, was wir machen, ist, wir kaufen Medikamente ein, ähm, nicht nur die Hausapotheke. Wir haben jetzt auch Kontakte, um die ganz wichtigen Sachen einzukaufen, Kochsatzlösungen, starke Schmerzmedikamente, äh, ähm, Antibiotika, all das wird ähm, gebraucht. Wir versuchen jetzt auch an Apparate heranzukommen. Also wir sind komplett flexibel und ähm, ja, 
versuchen, auf alles zu reagieren, was an Hilfe rufen aus der Ukraine bei uns ankommt. Mega gut. Äh, Antje, ist, ist es okay, dass, wenn du es nochmal, vielleicht, wie du es willst, nochmal in Englisch machst, dass wir einmal beide abgedeckt haben? Das wäre einfach super cool. Sorry für, für do doppeltes. <lacht> okay. Ja, <lacht> um, yeah, so um, on the last day of February, I just um, took a car and went to the um, Ukrainian border in Poland with my friend to just scope out the situation and see what is needed over there because the media just didn't really give us the um, proper picture of it. We um, saw that um, there's no, none of the big organizations were there at this point in time. I'm probably, they just need a bit more time because of all the um, bureaucracy they have involved. Um, so we saw that the city was um, organizing themselves um, just through hundreds of volunteers. Um, we started, we opened a fundraiser. We just quickly started um, buying supplies literally in supermarkets over there, bringing them to the train station so that people who then get on a train or on a bus actually have something to eat. Um, We also saw that there's just a lot of people coming over the border that just need to go into safety because most of the shelters at this point were full. There was like a full room with just kids and women at the train station with no more space. So we talked to a Berlin bus company and three days later we had already two buses full with people for the 60 people that we sent straight from the border to Berlin. After that, we just kept um, running buses back and forth. We also like our phone numbers were spreading online. So we started getting um, uh, messages from people that re need actual help from ins inside the Ukraine. So for example, um, injured people, or old, pe old people, it was freezing at this point in time. So we then actually made it happen to go over the border into the Ukraine, look for these people um, find them, um, bring them on board and then bring them into Poland and into safety. Um, we are now purchasing through our fundraiser, we're purchasing uh, medication, not just the easy stuff, also the hard stuff that's not so easy to get because that's um, really needed over there. But we um, have established all the contacts and we're bringing those directly into the Ukraine. So we're driving straight into the Ukraine, actually, mostly to Lviv. Um, we're also putting loads of um, food onto buses and we're driving that into the Ukraine um, as well. We have like lists of stuff that is um, needed. Not everything is needed, but we right now we know exactly um, what is needed over there. Mm. And either we drive into the Ukraine ourselves, but we don't really go past Lviv at the moment, just too dangerous. But some um, we also meet up with people, for example, from the other side of the Ukraine. We just um, put all the stuff we have in our bus into their buses and they bring it up, for example, over to the other side of the Ukraine. So in a nutshell. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Great, great job, really. Crazy. Um, yeah, uh, the one question in the chat is, um, aren't you scared driving to Aviv when there are bombings? Uh, and there me that means, are you, are you scared driving through the Ukraine right now or what are your feelings? So for me personally, I've always been at the border for four days. Um, that was probably enough I could take mentally because I have a lot of empathy for people. Um, but we are 20 people on the team right now. Um, and about 10 of them are constantly um, driving back and forth between Poland and Germany. And then there's um, one kind of hardcore team <laughs> that's mm -hmm. driving over to the Ukraine. Um, I think I'm more scared being in the back office than they are. I'm not sure if they really think about that. When I was there at the border, I like my adrenaline level was here. I wasn't thinking anymore. We just did what had to be done. So I'm pretty sure those people driving into the Ukraine, they know about the risks, but you don't really think about it. Um, I'm really worried. Um, a couple of days ago from one of our bus drivers, he was in Lviv and they had to spend the night there. And next morning there was a, a bombing. So it was four kilometers from where they were. And he sent me a picture. So I was really scared. Mm -hmm. Not so sure how scared he was. I haven't um, talked to him since then. Yeah, mad, mad respect uh, f from all of, of the viewers here. They are writing all the best wishes to you because that's really uh, honorable what you're doing. And you mentioned that there, is, there's that, that there's stuff needed. But what what kind of stuff is needed? Because um, that is a question Jared and I talked beforehand about it. Um, what would you say? What is what is needed at the moment? So first of all, it's some food. Um, we don't need anything like fresh food. We need, for example, there's huge cans of, um, I don't know, stews or whatever is durable, mm -hmm. has a lot of calories and is dense. Uh, so we're trying to um, pack things efficiently. So dense food, lots of calories and durable. That's um, what's needed right now. Also baby food, um, of course. Mm -hmm. um, medication is our main focus at the moment, which is not easy to get. And also it costs a lot of money. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have our second fundraiser now, so we have already spent 20,000 um, um, euros minus the freaking PayPal <laughs> costs. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. Quite a lot. Um, yeah. I'm getting around those. Uh, I have the second fundraiser now, but we're um, private people, so we don't really have any other means um, than that. So we're spending everything we have with like no costs for any bureaucracy at all, um, straight into into these um, things. So we're now like tomorrow. I'm going to meet up with a friend who is an expert on this field because we're trying to get some actual um, apparatus. Is that the English word like medical apparatus? I know inf infusionspumpen, narcoseapparat. Mm -hmm. Schallgeräte. Also wir haben spezifische Wünsche, weil wir eben mit ähm, Rettungsteams und, und ähm, Ärzten drüben in Kontakt sind und sie fragen halt danach und wir versuchen jetzt, ob wir das irgendwie auch noch möglich machen können, aber diese Dinge kosten halt ab 2000 Euro aufwärts. Ähm, ja, so we gotta see. Yeah, we are almost, uh, by the way, we are almost uh, at, at 1000 Euros, that, which is great. Awesome, thank you very much. Nice. Uh, for very, for being on there for a very short time. Uh, Auntie, let me ask you this. Uh, our our uh, point in this stream is not only to raise awareness of what's actually going on over there, but uh, the Ukrainians that I spoke to, some of who are going to be coming on the air with us later on, have said that the one thing that is most desperately needed is body armor. And it cannot be sourced anymore in Poland. Poland is completely, uh, completely sold out. So we're going to try and source it from Germany. And then I'm also going to try and source it from the state police uh, over here in America. And then I will, if we can't get enough in Germany, then I will uh, I will send it over directly from here. Yes. Um, the question is, do you know, or are you the right person to talk to about getting that directly into Ukraine, into the hands of the Ukrainian soldiers? Um, probably. So we have also been trying to cater for these things, but same for us, it has not been possible to purchase any of this. Um, one of the reasons also being that we're private people, not an organization. So just literally purchasing things for us, um, only like medication as well, only works through contact people that are um, happy to buy these things for us. And we just give them the money afterwards. But body armor, it has been like super difficult. Um, the stuff that we could probably get is like i don't know for example drones with um night vision um these kind of things like technical stuff i think is a bit easier to purchase but like actual body armor has also not been um easy for us um i have a friend from the uk ukraine who made it to berlin so i've been trying to work with him and supply him with these things because he's organizing to get that straight to his friends actually um in the ukraine but i don't have any hands-on experience doing that like we're bringing we're already bringing medication over the border and lots of the stuff is um, like in normal circumstances, you would not be allowed to bring it over, but we managed right. <laughs> through different. Well, originally what we want, we wanted to start sourcing like AK 47s and uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's not, that was not my <laughs> intention. <laughs> and we said, Hey, not uh, not a good idea. Second, uh, that you can't bring that stuff across the border anyway. So the, just to point out to everyone in the stream that nothing that is used here is going to be hurting anybody, but, for every piece of body armor you, you, you we were able to purchase, you may be saving the life of a Ukrainian soldier. No, that's that's great. Yes, yeah, so body armor we can bring over there, and we already have people asking us for it, but we just don't have it. <laughs> okay, well, then yeah. we, will, we'll, we will be taking care of getting the body armor, and then uh, I will, if if I don't have anybody else getting it directly to front lines, then I will I will get in touch with you, and we'll have it, uh, we'll get it directly to you. Uh, yeah, this, I mean, this, even, even our people are wearing body armor right now. Like what we have, they're wearing it just in case. Um, yeah, the, so good. far we have we've been on the air for about forty five minutes. We have raised uh, over twelve hundred euros. We're gonna nice. we're gonna keep this fundraiser running for the next six days, and then immediately after that, we will be getting the body armor. If we get it in Germany, we could have it two days later. If I get it from America, it's gonna have to to go overseas, so that may take another couple of days. Well, yeah, for everyone, maybe just one thing for everyone who's interested in seeing what we're doing. Um, I think you can see my name um, in in the um, live stream. Yeah. So if you go to my Instagram page, um, we have been trying to be very visible about what we're doing. And um, there is there are some highlights on my story where you can see how it all started and how you can even see um, pictures from what we're doing across the board and people we bring over. So maybe that gives also everyone a better feeling for what private people like us are doing at the moment and what is needed. 
Great. Ja, einmal in, in Deutsch bitte, damit es alle verstehen. Ähm, den Namen seht ihr auch jetzt direkt gerade im Stream unter dem Spendenbalken. Balken, da steht Antjes Name. Geht gerne auf ihren Instagram-Account. Und ich möchte auch an dieser Stelle sagen, dass wenn ihr spendet, das wird alles sehr, das bleibt transparent. Das ist mir wichtig, weil gerade bei Spenden wird auch viel Bullshit gemacht. Äh, das haben wir hier nicht vor. Also super geil, danke, dass ihr das macht. Und ähm, dementsprechend, ja. Antje, vielen, vielen Dank. Jared, yeah. do you have any questions left, Jared? Antje, is there anything else you would like to say? I mean, I'll, I'll, people don't just have to donate to this if they want to donate to Body Armor, but if people have like a moral objection to that and would rather donate money for food or for medicine or whatever, for more humanitarian and less military aid, can you, can they contact you directly and uh, donate directly to you? Yeah, they can contact me. So we have both a fundraiser, but we also now have a donation collection point in Berlin that is open four days a week. And we are, I'm just organizing that right now. We are going to open a um, shop for clothes for people that are already in Berlin. Also wir sammeln schon Sachspenden auch in Berlin. Ähm, Im Moment eher Nahrungsmittel, die wir dann direkt rüberfahren. Das könnt ihr zum Beispiel auf unserem Instagram sehen. Wir packen das alles. Ihr könnt richtig sehen, wie es halt von einem Bus in die Ukraine auch irgendwie geht. Ähm, und wir fangen jetzt auch bald an, Kleidung zu sammeln, weil die Leute, die schon hier sind, brauchen jetzt auch bald mal Kleidung. Die kommen halt mit einem Koffer irgendwie an und haben dann nicht mehr so viel. Ähm, wir haben einen Fundraiser, wer gerne Geld spenden möchte und eben die Sachspende, ihr könnt mich da einfach direkt anschreiben. Dann ähm, gebe ich euch die Infos. And Antje, I imagine like, uh, like Krogi and I, you are not a, you're not a, a professional help organization. You are just doing this personally grassroots style and you are taking no administration fees. Anything that is donated goes directly to the Ukrainian people, correct? Yeah, everyone on the team has actual jobs. Um, I'm self-employed even, so I'm making a lot of money, not right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, all of my free time and I don't sleep so much at the moment like my whole life is dedicated to this right now and just trying kind of make enough money to survive myself. Okay, well, real and dark. <lacht> Vielen Dank. Antje, wirklich auch nochmal vom, vom Chat und auch von mir persönlich äh, ganz toll, was du da machst irgendwie und dass du dich da so aufopferst. Ich finde das ganz beeindruckend und ich finde es schön, dass die Spenden und der Aktionismus, der ja gerade bei vielen Leuten herrscht, äh, quasi so gebündelt werden kann, weil das, was ich jetzt auch schon von anderen Leuten gehört habe, ja, wir haben was besorgt, wir haben was gesammelt, vor Ort wird das dann nicht richtig äh, sortiert, weil es einfach zu viel ist und ihr kümmert ja, euch darum, äh, das ist super wichtig. damit Dinge einfach nicht irgendwie verschütt gehen und damit ist irgendwie was, was passiert. Und deswegen ist es toll und auch gut, dass Jared jetzt sagt, Mensch, wir wollen jetzt aber Body Armor besorgen, weil das ist auch sicherlich etwas ist, was du gerade dargestellt hast, was nicht so leicht ist zu spenden und irgendwie zu bekommen und deswegen hat das vielleicht auch seine Daseinsberechtigung. Aber für ja. alle, alle Leute, die jetzt sagen, ey, das ist mir vielleicht doch ein bisschen zu wild, geht auf Antjes Internet, äh, also Instagram-Profil und da könnt ihr dann eben auch spenden und was machen und ich finde es absolut Hammer und äh, einmal auf Deutsch, wie gesagt, herzlichen Dank dafür und äh, ja, Liebe vom Chat, einmal Herzen vom Chat bitte für Antje, das kann man glaube ich mal machen, dann sieht sie es auch. Einfach Hammer. Alles klar, danke euch. Anja, vielen Dank, vielen Dank. Da, okay. kommt, da, kommt, da, da kommt dein Herzen rein jetzt. <lacht> Sehr cool. Alles klar, Jungs. Dann sage ich euch Tschüss. Ich muss jetzt auch gleich los. Viel Erfolg. All euch the, auch. All the Danke best. Danke für den Einsatz. Ciao. <lacht> Goodbye. Tschüss. Tschüss. Crazy, Jared. Okay, so that was Ante. She's going directly into the war zone. It's crazy, right? Right, right now. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. a, that's a super crazy. Yeah, and I'm 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 super stoked that we got already. Yeah, you said 1200 bucks. That is that is awesome. Yes. Uh, I would say if we got problems uh, in bringing um, those body armors, we have the opportunity to donate the money to Antje as well. That's not a problem. That means we have we have the opportunity to to spend the money right. That that is what I want to point out. But before the the plan with the body armor is is our plan, right? I mean, my plan. Since I'm not in in, uh, in Europe right now, unfortunately, mm. I uh, had thought that Krogi and I would take the body armor, get in his van, and drive to yeah. the border, and I would try and talk Krogi into driving across the border into the war zone. <laughs> But since I'm not there, Krogi's going to have to do this on his own. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a good driver, Jared. Um, yes. Yeah, but we, we, we must find out how long uh, does it take to get those armors, and yeah, we find, we find a way to do it, but... As you know, uh, raising some donations is sometimes a bit, uh, yeah, what, what is the right word? 
not i don't i don't think in a scam way but a bit in this direction you know and uh, th it, for me it's super important that we make clear what we are doing with the money and where the money is going and yeah it, it takes uh, yeah it will take a bit of time but we will uh, keep you yeah, in the loop as soon as I, as soon as i put up the, the flyer on my instagram i started getting people telling me you know what a scam it was maybe not that we, they thought we were going to steal the money but just that they were doing this for publicity this is not something we're doing for publicity this no. is something we're doing to to help the ukrainian people i mean i don't think anybody gives a shit about me or about Krogi. this is about the ukrainian people uh you know, defending their country and defending democracy and you know just you know thankfully it has not come to uh to, to germany or to poland or to any other european company countries besides ukraine yet but if the ukrainians fail to act who knows what could happen in, in a month or in a year that's right that's right and um yeah people suffer and that is a problem and most of my yeah you you are an entertainer uh I would say I am I'm doing uh, entertainment streams as well um, and therefore that is a topic uh, <laughs> in my in my heart I want to to um, yeah ich möchte es gerne ausgrenzen verstehst du ich möchte es gerne ausblenden blend it out yeah but yeah. but it's super important right now and therefore we're doing a live stream on this Wednesday and um, yeah asking kindly for some donations to help people in the Ukraine and um, yeah it's good that you're here nice that you're here Jared nice that you're here dear viewers and also on people doing people that are using charity as an excuse to make a couple bucks I mean you gotta be you gotta be a real dirtbag for that I mean even more of a dirtbag than like a politician that's right I don't know what it's like in Germany, but in America, like the only people that are politicians are really, really, really scummy dirtbags. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've heard, I have heard something, Jared. We, 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 okay. we, all right, all right, all right. So, um, how much time do you have, Krogi? I don't, I don't want to. I, I, the, the whole, important. Jared, but, let let no. me point it out. The whole evening is dedicated for me to in supporting ukrainian people that means after our talk when it will be i have no idea i will start my drum stream as i do every wednesdays and every i i will ask for for uh, music requests for song requests and i will try to play drums to it yeah but um the requests will all go to the donation um go uh, to the, our donation goal yeah and therefore okay. i'm raising donations all the, the whole evening yeah. i just like i just like to say to your fans i want to apologize i don't know if you tuned in because you want to see Krogi and i you know get drunk on beer or drink toilet water or drink uh maraschino cherry brine tomorrow not today together in the balls with um with a taser but that is not what this stream is about this yeah. stream is uh, is about uh, entirely about uh, our guests uh, from Ukraine that are supporting Ukraine, and there will be no spiel with Schmerz uh, in this uh, in this stream. Yeah. However, in the future that may come, but right now I think we've got more important uh, more important fish to fry. That's right. That's right. right so that being said, uh, our next next guest who I'm going to try and have call in right now is uh, Antje, who or is uh, sorry is a uh, Yulia. Julia, who okay. has uh, been on uh, our beer pong stream before mm -hmm. and is a Ukrainian heritage and for uh, for some stuff that we have in the future we may need a translator for so she can explain A, what's going on, B, if she knows anybody that's, uh, any, any other ideas for donating money and um, C, to, to translate if uh, we have any Ukrainian need to translate. So I'm going to let her know right now. All right. Also Jared holt den nächsten Gast ran. Es wird äh, Julia sein, die eine äh, ja, ukrainische Abstammung äh, hat. Und äh, sie hat schon, ich kenne sie auch tatsächlich, wir haben nämlich schon mal Bierpong zusammengespielt, äh, was Jared organisiert hat. Und sie wird hier auch so ein bisschen als Übersetzerin fungieren, äh, bei den weiteren Sachen sozusagen. Bin ich gespannt, was sie jetzt zu berichten hat. Ich weiß auch gar nicht, wo sie lebt, ehrlich gesagt. Aber sie wird uns sicherlich was erzählen können. Und ja, ihr habt schon recht im Chat. Oh, da, da ist sie, Moment. No, there's nothing. Jared. No picture at the moment. But there is. Moment. Moment, das ist gut. Könnte ich schon hören. Okay, we got 1573 euros. Awesome. Jared, have you seen it? 
I, I, yes, yes, yeah. Awesome. That's, uh, over thirty percent of the goal yeah. we need. I don't. I. Uh, I mean, they need as much body armor as possible. So anyone that is, uh, if you at a point over the next six days, you see, okay, it's already reached five thousand. Don't let that stop you. We. It's, it's not. There's no limit. It's good kind of grenza on true. how much body armor we can buy. We will buy as much body armor and protect as many Ukrainians as the money comes in. Yeah, that is that is right. Julia, kannst du uns hören? No. I, I know, I think our guest is having problems. Yeah, maybe the internet connection is not so good because we heard her briefly. Briefly, yeah. Okay. Now she's in twice. Ah, there. Oh, there she is. There she is. Hi, Julia. Hello. 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 Hi. 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 Guten Abend. Thank you for the invitation. I have the whole time alles mitverfolgt und uh, ja, nur ganz ganz toll Danke sagen und auch an Anja. Die kann bestimmt uns nicht gerade hören, aber es ist einfach fantastisch zu sehen, wie viele Leute an dir sich und dass alle das quasi mitfühlen. Ja, super. Julia, bevor du, bevor du weitermachst, ich muss dich leider einmal unangenehm unterbrechen. Hast du irgendwo in deiner ähm, Wohnung einen besseren Empfang? Es ist gerade leider etwas unterbrochen. Also ich habe vom Sinn das verstanden, dein, deine Dankung, Danksagung, aber da ist wenig, wenig Netz gerade, so wie es scheint, schlechte Verbindung. Okay. Wenn es zu schlecht ich ist... Ich extra zu LTE gerissen. Wenn es zu schlecht ist, dann müsst du... Jetzt, jetzt ist viel besser. Okay, dann probieren wir. Ich habe mehrere Internet-Hotspots zu Hause, daher ist das immer ein Glücksspiel. Super, nee, das ist super. Ja, um, yeah, I would say, Jared, uh, please, would you like to introduce um, Julia and then we could we can uh, we can talk. Yes, yes. Uh, for anyone uh, for anyone on the internet does not know the uh, beautiful uh, blogger and influencer in Julia Hiss. This is Julia. Julia, you live in Berlin, but you have Ukrainian. Uh, ancestry, is that correct? Genau, also ich, also I moved to Germany six years ago, but I'm Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. I live in Lviv, so my family live in Lviv right now. And they're still there? Yes. Oh, no. Well, my okay. sister and my cousin and small baby for monats, for monat old, they moved uh, three weeks ago because I begged them to come with baby uh, to Berlin to me. And now we are all here together, but my aunts, my grandparents and everyone is there and is it possible to to have yeah some kind of uh, connection to them at the moment can you phone well, them or what what can you do well luckily uh Lviv is safe zone mm -hmm. and there was only two or three uh bombs uh, uh attack bombs there yeah it doesn't seem like the the term uh, uh safe zone is getting a lot of respect from the Russian army. You know? Yes. Again, not not here to bash the Russians, but it just seems like there's, from what I've seen, uh, and obviously this is coming from mainstream media, you would probably have a better uh, perspective on this, but it just seems to me like the, the, the Russian army, you know, the, the Ukrainians are just trying to protect their own country, while the Russian army is just committing war crime after war crime after war crime. Bombing yeah. maternity hospitals and, uh, and and green corridors, but you know, again, not to not to bash the Russians, but maybe you have some insight as to what is actually going on. I'm fairly yeah. certain that that Putin, as he said, is not in there to uh, protect the Ukraine from neo Nazis um, led by uh, a uh, uh, the the Jewish president of the country. Yes. Yeah. And as one Russian guy said, uh, everything is possible in this Ukrainian that uh, Jewish Nazi president runs. And um, yeah, well, luckily, West Ukraine is like safety zone, if we can say this, when because the Tomer, Kharkiv, uh, or everything East, Middle Kiev are very hot points. And uh, yeah, the Russian army doesn't respect green corridor corridors and there are a lot of people like in mariupol it's it was i, I i'm i'm not gonna lie it's like one million citizens and 
the city is completely destroyed, completely destroyed, and the people are hiding. There are uh, today. I re I read today that it's around hundred thousand people still in uh, Mariupol, somewhere hiding. But it's it's insane and to look I'm at these pictures you see and realize you know these aren't pictures from nineteen forty four. These are pictures from yesterday. I'm living like in a bad movie. I don't know what day is it today. I my 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 life stopped. 24 February and right now I'm still in February and I can't even believe that it's almost one month of the completely huge war in my country. It's unbelievable, indescribable, and I don't want to <laughs> recommend these feelings to anyone. Mm -hmm. I believe that. But um, to, my, to my question, how is it possible to, to stay in, in, in contact with your family right now? Uh, I use Telegram. Well, I said there's no problem with internet in my part of Ukraine. Yeah. There's there's no problem there. They are they hearing uh, all the time these air signals, so they have to hide. And luckily, a lot of those signals are just like signals, you know, and nothing mm. but happens. Uh, they bombed Lviv uh, first time. They bombed Lviv uh, last this week on Monday. They uh, tried to bomb our airport. And as I wrote to my sister, it was really funny because at the evening, one night before, we I was talking with my cousin, and she's like, "Well, luckily they bomb done bomb Lviv, and in the morning they did it." And my cousin said, "Well, I wasn't surprised. You know, I can't even describe how this mentally." It's hard for all of them. My sister and my uh, other cousin are here and they are two weeks in safety already. And sometimes when they hear airplanes outside, they are like, stop talking, they stop breathing and they are really scared. And then for me, for example, it's just, I can, I can, I can, can, can imagine what, what it is to live there right now. Mm, yeah, I, I, for me as well. It, it's unbelievable that this is actually happening, and I, I wish you, all your family members all the best. To be honest, and the, the viewers as well, because it's such a sad and uh, yeah uncommon situation you are in right now, and we are all right in, in right now. But you have your family members still there, which is kind of crazy. And do you know how the situation is? Actually, not in the in in the in the term of the feelings, but do they have um, water? Do they have supplies? What is the situation right now? Uh, well, in my part of Ukraine, they are trying to get back to work to uh, support our economic because it's also very important when you have a war and uh, your part of uh, territory is not in the war in the hot po hot spot mm. it's important to keep the economy uh, economy work mm -hmm. but uh, the problem is is this uh, kiev zhitomir all these hot spots because all green uh, uh, all this peace um, volunteers are scared to go there mm. Because Russian doesn't uh, respect the green corridors, you know, and you can do nothing, you know. Th they make deals with governments, like Russian governments, with Ukrainian government. They are saying, okay, we make this green corridor to evacuate people, and the people saying that who, who that they are shutting the Russian soldiers just shutting around. They stealing food. They raping raping women and. Mm. That's just I'm 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 getting so angry. I have never felt such anger inside of me because, yeah, they said that's Putin war, but that's not Putin there sh sh shutting all civilist people there. Mm. That's our Russian soldiers there who's doing that. Understand? Yes. Um, that means your your family members are pretending. And uh, that they have an, a normal life by doing their their uh, actual work. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. But their yes, lives are in danger every twenty four hours a day. Yeah. Yes. And for example, very often they work in. They have to stop. They have to leave the building or go uh, downstairs to the bunkers or um, somewhere to hide. And they wait till this air alarm is ends. And it can be 
30 minutes, it can be two hours. I follow this on Telegram. I have this live channel. And also in this moment, every time my heart stops, I'm like, oh, my, please, mm. let it let it be like fake alarm. Uh, you said your, what was it? Your grandmother is still there? Is that right? All my family, yeah, all my family. My, you you uh, got your grandmother and your grandfather? Is that... Uh... Yeah, grandmother, grand uh, two grandmothers, two grandfathers, uh, my um, my nephew because they are older than eighteen and no men are allowed to um, across the border. You know, Ukrainian men have to stay in the country mm -hmm. from eight eight until sixty years old, and my aunts and my cousins decided to stay there for 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 the family. I mean, let's. Talk about your, your grandfather or your grandmother. Uh, uh, maybe they experienced the, the Second World, World War as well. So, uh, what do they say about the situation? Did they expect a situation like this, or is, is there? Do you have talk? Did, did you talk to them and and ask them what what they are thinking? Um, well, you know. When you have, it's, it's pretty funny, when you have Russians as your neighbors, you're expecting everything. So, you know, it was maybe unexpected because no one expected that it's something like this happen. But Russia tries to occupy our country a long, long time ago, you know. 2014, it was really unexpected for us as they come to Krim and Donbass and... Um, we thought, okay, we wasn't prepared. And now I think everyone was mentally prepared as as possible. Maybe I, it's it's really hard to to find the right words for right mm -hmm. words for it. But um, yeah, they it's hard for them. They uh, everyone watching only news. So I'm trying to talk with them. I send they have right now WhatsApp or Vi uh, Viber it calls. So I send them yes, some pictures about my life. What's happened? I send them some yes, one second, please. Oh, hang on, hang on. Yes. Hang on, our next guest is called in. Okay, it's sorry. Yeah, once again, please. So I tried to send some pictures about my life and here in Germany, you know, just to distract them from the TV. Because right now in TV, you can see only uh, news. Mm. And when you watch only news, uh, you, you, you get crazy. So the first whole week or two weeks, they was only at home and they was all the time hiding. Right now they are trying to go to the doctors to make some appointments and trying to get a little bit of normal life. Yeah, I see. I see. Um, yeah, I would like to switch uh, to the German language for just a few yeah. uh, sentences, please. Um, ja, was, du, ja, was, was du gerade gesagt hast, und ich glaube, das können auch viele äh, von, ja, von den Leuten hier in Deutschland irgendwie nachvollziehen, man ist ja auch irgendwie interessiert, abgeschränkt, äh, traurig äh, und dann irgendwann gibt es den Punkt, wo man das realisiert und dann schaut man den nächsten Tag wieder die Nachrichten und den Tag darauf wieder die Nachrichten und irgendwann macht das ja auch mit einem selber was, dass man aufpassen muss, du ja wahrscheinlich noch viel mehr, weil du deine Verwandtschaft hast und dich das so stark betrifft, aber ich glaube für uns alle ist das einfach schwierig, auch selbst gesund zu bleiben und auch zu sagen, Mensch, man, irgendwie muss man helfen, aber man darf selber nicht komplett daran zu, äh, zerstören so und äh, also sich kaputt machen und äh, das ist etwas, was für viele Leute super schwierig ist, die auch gerade gar nicht direkten Bezug dahin haben, aber alle sind so, oder die meisten Leute, die ich kenne zumindest, also alle, die ich kenne, Punkt, sind einfach, ja, todtraurig darüber, was da passiert, was sich da abspielt. Ja. Und das kann man auch sagen, ohne dass man das jetzt auf eine, also von meinem Standpunkt auf einen politischen, äh, ja, auf, in eine politische Richtung bringt, weil man einfach sagen muss, wenn Menschen leiden, die doch so nah sind und die man einfach, wo es einfach so überraschend ist und so leid tut, dann kann man das nicht gut haben. Und dementsprechend finde ich das toll, äh, Julia, dass du gerade auch hier bei uns im Stream dabei bist und einfach was erzählst, weil ja, ich weiß, es ist auch manchmal schwierig, Nachrichten zu hören und immer das Gleiche zu hören und auch nicht zu wissen, naja, mit wem haben wir es denn da zu tun überhaupt? Und einfach jetzt mal von dir so ein Bild zu bekommen, du hast die Wurzeln in der Ukraine, du hast deine Familie da noch vor Ort und kannst quasi aus erster Hand berichten und einfach sagen, ja Leute, aber so ist es. Und ähm, das finde ich, das bewegt mich sehr und da möchte ich mich bedanken, dass du das tust. Also es ist äh, schön, dass du heute 
quasi Zeit dir nimmst und uns einmal mit äh, auf den Weg nimmst und einfach sagst, was gerade da los ist. Also dann noch erstmal danke. Ich, ich wollte ja. noch sagen, dass okay, noch so ein kleiner Hintergrund, was da äh, abgeht. Die Leute äh, in der Ukraine haben sich so sehr versammelt, dass ich einfach, ich bin selbst richtig stolz Ukrainerin. Ich war immer stolz Ukrainerin zu sein, aber besonders jetzt dieser Landliebe, aber nicht in so einer rassistischen Form, sondern diese richtig schöne Landliebe ist vorhanden. Wir helfen uns zusammen äh, in der Ukraine. Wir sind bereit, zusammen zu kämpfen und das ist einfach toll. Und wir haben immer noch unseren Sinn für Humor und versuchen immer positiv und lustige Geschichten zu erzählen und ähm, uns gegenseitig zu supporten. Also wenn ich so manchmal mich schlecht fühle, wenn ich die Nachrichten lese, dann höre ich, was unser ähm, so, so Politiker quasi, der erste Hand von Präsident, erzählt. Der erzählt lustige Geschichten, die passiert sind, wo die, ein Farmer von russischer, ähm, russischen Leuten äh, Tank, äh, Panzer geklaut hat. Zum, mit, einfach mit ähm, äh, so einem Abschleppsei, ja. 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 Und es gibt so mehrere Geschichten und ich finde, also die Stimmung in der Ukraine, außer die Leute, die da wirklich Angst haben in Mariupol und so weiter, das ist etwas anderes. Die Leute, äh, andere sind stark und wir denken, wir gewinnen. Also wir sind motiviert und wir hoffen, dass alles wird gut. Mhm. Ja, absolut, absolut. Um, Jared, you said um, Julia would like to, I mean, Julia, you're here, you can answer it by yourself, but Jared you can said... You answer the question yourself, but yes, we do, we have a, a video that was sent to me about an hour before yeah. we went on the air that came straight from Kiev. Uh, our friend uh, Valeria is a, is a model that lives in Kiev, uh, works in Paris, but is in Kiev right now and is in direct contact with uh, the Ukrainian army and they have sent, I asked her what we could do to support them and she sent over a video. It's mostly in English, but some of it is in Ukrainian. Uh, Julia, the question on you is, would you be so good uh, to stick around for a few minutes, watch the video with us and maybe uh, help us uh, with the translation? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay cool. Before, but, yeah, I got the video. Before I start, I uh, would let you all know that we are uh, getting, that we have 1,700 90 no <laughs> we got 1856 euros and that is awesome that's super super cool thanks a lot for uh, supporting the Re ukrainian people supporting this, all this stream. money is going to go directly to body armor body armor they can go to the ukrainian army and will help protect yulia's and the other families that are in ukraine now awesome thanks a lot okay i will start the video i will try to do it here is it is nice. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Valeria. I'm a volunteer in Kiev, Ukraine. Is there, is there sound? Cool. Yeah, I don't uh, hear it on here. But... Yeah, yeah. I know. So uh, wait, wait, wait. You, um, you need the sound as well. Uh, but how is that gonna be happen? Uh, 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 uh. We don't need, yeah, yeah. You're gonna need to get the uh, sound for you. Yeah, Yulia. because you'll uh, need to translate it. Ah, maybe. Sorry, guys. I'm not. I'm not uh, sure how to do it with the um, with the connection here. Maybe you can join my stream and for just th this two minutes, uh, please watch my stream because it's easier. Is this possible? Is it possible? Yes. Yeah. Give Give me Give me a hint when you're ready, and then. Uh... I'm ready. Okay, Jared, Jared, you too. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. I will start it then. Hi guys. Nice to meet you. I'm Valeria, I'm a volunteer in Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, I know that you see many videos uh, from Ukraine, what happened right now, and uh, how difficult and sad situation we have. Russians bombing our cities non-stop, all the day, all night, uh, especially big cities especially on the east. Mariupol, Kharkov, uh, Chernigiv, Sumy. It's so hot and terrible situations right now there. People can't evacuate uh, because Russians are bombing all time. No green corridors, nothing. No way to survive.
now it's a really big problem uh, with evacuations uh, and uh, all our hopes is only on our army. Our soldiers doing all the best what they can to save us and uh, they need support. Uh, many people want to help and send uh, some staff equipment, but uh, the biggest problem is that we have not enough uh, bulletproof vest and helmets, tactical helmets uh, for soldiers because we was not uh, ready for such an event. I can't see when our boys fighting uh, without this stuff. It's terrible, you know. So it will be great if you can help uh, with this because uh, we need this on the east, on the west, uh, on the south and on the north. And right now I will show you uh, where I must stay all these months. Uh, I'm in Kiev, I'm still in Kiev and Kiev still bombing every day. By the way, uh, I want to say thank you for your support and uh, thank you for all the people uh, all around the world uh, who can help us, uh, who still helping us and uh, who send us uh, money, support, uh, good words and uh, who can uh, help this house for our people uh, and for all kinds of help. People, you are really great. Thank you very much. All the Ukraine say you thank you for this. We are soldiers of the Marisco One Volunteer Battalion. We are fighting for our land, for our Ukraine. We ask you help. We need the personal military and tactical equipment, helmets and bulletproof vest. This save lives and helps our battalion personnel. Thank you very much for your support and faith in us. Glory Ukraine! Slava Ukraine! Heroes Slava! Вітаю вільний народ Європи. До вас звертається вільний народ України. Наразі в нашій країні війна. Війна в столиці і війна в найбільших містах країни. Вся наша країна у вогні. Дуже багато людей захищають країну. Збройні сили України роблять все, що можуть, але наразі ми потребуємо дуже багато обмундирування, шоломів, бронежилетів та тактичної медицини, тому що нашу країну хочуть захищати дуже багато людей. Тому звертаюся до вас за допомогою, хочу, щоб ви нас зрозуміли і допомогли нам зробити наш світ спокійним і вільним. Дякую Європі за те, що ви нам допомагаєте. Я зустрів дуже багато людей англомовних із різних країн Європи, які нам допомагають воювати. Але наразі деяких речей нам не вистачає. Ми дуже вам вдячні за те, що ви нам допомагаєте і робите це надалі. І ми наближаємо перемогу. Дякую вам всім. Good afternoon. We are from Ukraine. Uh, the situation in Ukraine now is difficult. Uh, Russia attacked Ukraine. Uh, they are very big. Ukraine is a small country. They have more tanks, aircrafts, helicopters, rockets. Uh, by technician they are more powerful than we. But our peoples are more strong. They are brave. It's our land, we defend this land, so for us it's difficult, it's not easy. We have problems with equipment, 
we have problem with anti-tanks, anti-aircraft launchers, but uh, Europe help us. They help with different uh, anti-rockets and helicopters. It's very good. Uh, with this help, we can stand more days. We can defend our cities and our peoples. What very important, because they not only attack soldiers, they also attack. Uh, simple peoples, civilians. It's not good. Uh, but it's very good that Europe helped to us. It's very important. And I hope in future Europe will help us more, more, more. Because this enemy, not enemy for Ukraine, this enemy for all world. The first what I want to ask. Uh, we need also body armors and helmets. It's very important because this equipment they can save life. Uh, our enemy, he is very horrible. He uses artillery. Um, it's not only like bullets. It's small pieces. This will blow in all sides. So if we have more equipment, more helmets, it save us. Uh, so we ask for this help. It's very important. And in future, I also very hope that Europe will help not only with body armor, helmets, anti-rockets, anti-aircraft. I hope that Europe will wake up and understand that this enemy, not only for Ukraine, this enemy for all world. Because peace is important, war is not good, it's not decision. And the last what I want to say is glory to Ukraine. All right. Thank you. The video is about to end. There we are. Okay, Jared hört noch. Okay. Ich höre den Stream jetzt doppelt, genau. Ihr seid wieder da. Okay. And first of all, what, what kind of video is this? is crazy. It is just crazy. Unbe yeah, yeah. Unbelievable footage. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, can you believe that? And I mean, and this is this this I mean, this mostly agrees with what we've seen over here in the West in the mainstream media. I, yeah, I don't know what they show in uh, Russia. I would imagine something like we see on uh, Fox News. But um, yeah, I mean, it seems clear to me that the the side that uh, needs to be supported here is the side who's whose homeland is being invaded. You certainly, I can't see, understand anybody saying, oh yeah, you need to support the Russians. And also we're sending over body armor. You can't hurt anybody with body armor to just protect themselves. So what we are doing is collecting money, uh, collecting money. We have, where are we at now? 19,090. Yeah, almost, 90, almost 2K, almost 2K. Almost 2,000 euros for body armor uh, to send to, to send to Ukraine. We got 2K, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I want to thank uh, I want to thank Yulia for sticking around. Yulia, can you help us out with the uh, with some translation? One of those soldiers was speaking in Ukrainian. Uh, please help the people. I think uh, this is mostly a, a Deutsch stream, so we like the new presentation von Ukrainisch auf Deutsch. Okay. Uh, so, allererst hatte sich sehr sehr bedankt für für die Hilfe für für alles was Europa tut und er sagt, dass in letzter Zeit hat er wirklich viele auch Volontäre direkt in der Ukraine getroffen, die aus verschiedenen europäischen Ländern kommen. Und da ist er richtig, richtig dankbar und auch stolz. Ähm, er hat gesagt, dass benötigt wird, also so wie alle anderen, die Schutzwesten, Helme und Medikamente, die jetzt in der Ukraine schwer zu kriegen. Das liegt daran, dass auch viele Volontäre und viele, viele Aushilfs, also viele Leute haben sich freiwillig gemeldet zu kämpfen und dadurch gibt es auch nicht genug ähm, sch ähm, so Schutzkleidung sozusagen, Schutzausrüstung. Mhm. Und ich habe auch persönlich mit meiner kleinen Community probiert, äh, Geld zu sammeln und leider Schutzwesten, das ist nicht ganz normale Schutzweste, das muss Klasse 4 sein, wenn ich mich nicht irre sind in Europa, auch in Deutschland, sehr, sehr schwer zu finden. Also ich habe versucht äh, anzurufen und äh, viele sind jetzt schon ausverkauft. Mhm. Ähm, er hat 
wirklich gebetet, dass mit eurer Hilfe, mit eurer Unterstützung können wir weiter zusammenkämpfen. Wir sind da, wir brauchen nur noch eure Unterstützung und den Rest schaffen wir zusammen. Ja, vielen Dank, Julia. Ähm, ich weiß gar nicht richtig, auch auf Deutsch, weil es mir leichter fällt, ich weiß gar nicht, was ich dazu richtig sagen soll, das ist, sind Bilder, die ganz traurig sind und äh, also für mich auch ganz äh, stark mitnehmend, weil ich nicht weiß, was man jetzt als richtige Worte finden kann und einfach nur, das ist schön, dass es jetzt, ich glaube, was immer wichtig ist, dass die Menschen zusammenhalten und ähm, dass, dass man merkt, okay, da ist Leid und da brauchen Leute Unterstützung und da können wir gemeinsam was tun und wir wollen ja auch irgendwie alle was tun, auch die Leute, die jetzt gerade zuschauen, wollen ja was machen, sonst wären sie nicht hier, man kann sich, man kann sich besser unterhalten, man kann besser den Abend gestalten, als, äh, als sich das Leid quasi von anderen Leuten angucken, das heißt, alle haben Lust, was zu machen und dementsprechend Herz, ja, dann lass uns das machen, lass uns äh, weiter hier ein bisschen den Support-Stream am Leben erhalten, dass wir zumindest so äh, was Gutes machen können und äh, quasi, Julia, ja, dein, dein, deine Heimat sozusagen unterstützen können, wie es auch immer geht. Äh, viel mehr fällt mir da nicht gerade ein, Sinnvolles zu erzählen, weil es einfach, äh, einfach auch für mich eine schwere Situation ist und einfach ganz krass ist. Also viel, viel Kraft äh, wünsche ich euch und dir, ja. Ähm, Jared, do you have any questions left? To Julia. Well, well, as you said, it is difficult to source the body armor that we're looking for because because so much has been needed for the war effort. It's completely sold out. It cannot be sourced in Poland, but we have a few guys in uh, in Germany that have it. We have a couple connections over there, and also um, I've got some connections over here in America. I, I would much rather source it in Germany, just because it, the, the sooner we get it on people's bodies the sooner they are not dying from these uh from uh, these attacks but if necessary i will source this in america and uh i will i will send it straight over there uh there are six days to go i i don't know, we'll see how much the how quickly we can get it shipped over there but i am i'm going to be uh leaving for germany on the 18th of april mm -hmm. if it's faster i'll just bring it over there in my luggage but I guess bring a bunch of uh, suitcases full of body armor over there, but uh, hopefully we can get it over there, ship over there faster. Hopefully uh, we can get it directly from from Germany or from neighboring countries and get it in the hands of Ukrainians as quickly as possible. Yeah, I think uh, Julia is is Julia is still here. No, they, there she is. Yeah, okay. Back. Okay. Ja, das, das wird die, ich sag's auch nochmal kurz auf Deutsch, das wird sicherlich die Schwierigkeit sein, wenn wir uns jetzt als Ziel setzen, dass wir ähm, wirklich ja, Schutzwesten besorgen wollen und ähm, Schutzwesten werden gebraucht und das hat ja auch eben Antje nochmal dargestellt, nicht nur, also das möchte ich auch nochmal erwähnen, ja die Soldaten brauchen Schutzwesten, aber möglicherweise haben ja auch Soldaten schon durch ihren... Job in Anführungszeichen Westen. Auch die Leute, die helfen wollen, brauchen Schutzwesten. Das heißt, Schutzwesten werden in jedem Falle gebraucht. Und ähm, genau. da ist es wichtig, dass wir da irgendwie welche bekommen. Und Jared hat da äh, schon Ideen, aber es ist nicht ganz so easy. Mein Vorschlag ist jetzt auch nochmal für alle, um das deutlich zu machen, weil wir ja gerade explizit für dieses Thema äh, nach Geld fragen, sollte es absehbar sein, dass es auch für Jared schwierig ist, da ranzukommen, dann werden wir das Geld natürlich nutzen und es direkt auch anderweitig an diese Hilfsorganisation verteilen, zum Beispiel die, äh, in der Antje ist. Ne? Also das ist mir nur wichtig, dass das betone ich jetzt auch alle 15 Minuten, dass alle wissen, okay, das ist jetzt hier kein, keine Verarsche oder sonst was oder wir machen das, um uns irgendwie in ein besseres Licht zu stellen. Darum geht es hier gar nicht, weil dann könnten Jared und ich auch was anderes machen, was auch Spaß macht. So, dann, es geht einfach darum, dass wir irgendwie auch was machen wollen und es ist nicht so leicht, was zu machen. Äh, und das Einzige, was wir gerade tun können, ist ein bisschen um ja Awareness äh, quasi buhlen und euch quasi vielleicht auch zu ermutigen, das hier zu unterstützen. Und ich finde, dass das gut funktioniert, Jared. Ich finde, du hast hier tolle Gäste, äh, auch mit dem Video. Das ist, äh, das ist mehr als das, was ich gedacht hätte, was wir heute Abend machen. Also, danke, danke dir, uh, uh, Krogi, dass du hast unser, uh, uh, I think das ist ein perfekter Forum uh, für uns. Ja. To allow us on to your, uh, on your live stream? Ja, sure. Sure, sure. sure thing. Gerne, gerne, gerne. Ja, ähm. Was ich noch, darf ich noch kurz was dazu sagen, was ist, uh, vielleicht was euch weiterhilft? Ähm, mein Freund aus der Ukraine, der arbeitet auch als Volontär gerade da und fährt herum für 
alles Nötige. Und viele Fabriken, zum Beispiel die früher Klamotten genäht haben, sind jetzt spezialisiert, um Schutzwesten zu machen, zu produzieren. Also die versuchen jetzt das auch im Land zu produzieren, weil zum Beispiel in Europa nicht möglich wäre zu finden und mm. äh, Versand, Versandzeit aus Amerika nach Ukra in die Ukraine zu lange gedauert wird. Vielleicht wäre es möglich, das direkt in die Ukraine quasi einzukaufen. Das wäre auch gut. Auch euch später yeah, yeah, weiterhelfen. Uh, yeah, if, if that is possible, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I will. After the stream is over, I'll talk to you. I need to talk to my guys in Germany. I need to talk to my guy over here, and I will talk to you. And wherever we can get this uh, the fastest, that would be great. Yeah, sure, sure thing. All right. Yeah, uh, Jared, do we have uh, another guest, or what was the plan? Oh yes, yes, we do have another guest. Uh, this is my my friend Elvis. Uh, is in the uh, suburbs of Kiev right now. He was the promoter. Uh, for our tour when we were uh, last time we were in Kiev and he is ready but I would like to see if Yulia has anything else she would like to, to sure. add or to say say to the people in the say to the, the viewers of the stream uh, one more time please I, I just want to see if you yeah, would sure. have to say to the viewers of the stream you have we have so generously already donated 2230 euros yeah awesome for, for body armor yeah. crazy Julia, take take your take your time. We don't have some uh, yeah limitations here. Take your time. Yeah. yeah, we're not we're not in any we're not in any rush right now. Yeah. Ich wollte nur ganz ganz toll Danke sagen. Ich hoffe, dass dass wenn wir jetzt alles zusammenhalten, wird dieser böser Mensch lernen, dass man soll sich nicht mit Europa angehen und äh, jeder andere, der solche Gedanken haben würde, würde Daraus lernen, dass man soll nicht gegen Ukraine oder auch gegen Europa hetzen. <lacht> Zusammen, wir sind stark. So. <lacht> vielen Dank, Julia. Vielen, vielen Dank. Danke, Julia. Danke. Wirklich äh, schwer, schwere Zeiten. Ganz viel Kraft, auch vom Chat. Chat, jetzt könnt ihr nochmal, Julia sieht den Livestream ja, wenn, ne, wenn ihr damit sozusagen, wenn ihr das fühlt, was Julia sagt, wenn ihr damit relaten könnt, dann teilt das gerne mal mit Herzen, damit sie das auch sieht, dass äh, wir wirklich auch zusammenhalten, äh, auch wenn es gerade nur symbolisch ist, aber die Spenden kommen ja auch rein und äh, von daher super danke, ein großes Dankeschön für deine Zeit, die du hier quasi einmal reinbringst und dass wir alle das Bild mal einmal mit erleben können, was gerade bei dir so spruchteilartig zumindest kriegen wir es mit, was bei dir gerade abgeht. Wahnsinn. Schaut mal noch mein T-Shirt, ich weiß nicht. Ich spreche Ukrainisch, was ist deine Superkraft, ja. <lacht> Super gut, ja, den, hum den Humor. Und ich hoffe, nächstes Mal spielen wir weiter Biopunk und äh, das wird alles einfach eine, ja. eine Geschichte. Das, das äh, wünsche ich yeah, mir auch. Hey, Julie, don't take this the wrong way, but next time we play, uh, I want your husband on my team. <lacht> This guy's dynamite. <lacht> That's because I'm Ukrainian, yes? <lacht> yeah, that, that is right. But, ja, uh, yeah, schöner Spruch, du hast deinen Humor nicht verloren, das hast du eben schon gesagt und uh, das ist auch wichtig, das sollte man sich auch nie nehmen lassen. Hey, wir sehen uns bald. Ich bin uh, zurück in Berlin in, uh, in Mitte, Mitte April. Super, freue ich mich. Alright. Dann alles Gute und danke. Ich bleibe noch im Chat. Super, ja, gerne. Okay. Dann, äh, wie, heißt du, wie heißt du im Chat, dass die Leute das wissen? Weißt ich du habe das? noch mich nicht an... Achso, du bist einfach nur so da. Du liest einfach nur. Okay, alles klar. Hätte sein können, dass du auch schreiben kannst. Genau. Nein, sie, sie liest einfach nur. In Ordnung. Julia, herzlichen Dank. Äh, alles Gute. Ja. Danke. Danke, Julia. Okay, I am going to call in our next guest now. Ja. So, Elvis was your uh, tour manager in... in Sorry, once again. Okay. okay. So, um, as, we're, as we're getting set up, I just want to point out that... Um, You know, a lot of people may think that, you know, we're doing this, you know, for our, some sort of personal glory or, you know, where this is set up as some kind of scam to raise money. 100% of the money that is raised here is going to go to buy body armor to go straight to the uh, the Ukrainian, to either to the soldiers or to people giving civilian aid. Uh, not one cent is going to go anywhere else. I know people don't probably don't trust me because I'm an American, and Krogi, I don't know if you know what goes on in America a lot, but we have uh, we have guys over here called televangelists mm -hmm. that do what we do here, which is go on uh, the air and talk and run their mouths and get people to donate, 
uh, one particular one named Kenneth Copeland, uh, gets donations. Now, the last time I, I saw him get a donation, it was because he needed to have uh, money to buy a ninth private jet. Eight private jets are not enough for this televangelist. Yeah, that's a problem with your country. <laughs> uh, ninth private jet. So I just want to assure everybody that is watching this stream that we are not going to use this money to buy a ninth private jet for Krogi and myself. No, instead of a ninth private jet, every single cent is going to go straight to the Ukrainian people on the ground, to the soldiers, to the humanitarian aid there. Rest assured, the money will go directly there. Nothing will go into our private jet fund. Just wanted to say that. Yeah, that's totally correct. Yeah, nice. Um... Yeah, and here's our our next guest. I mean, your next guest because I am not. Uh, I, you don't have to. Yeah, you introduce him, please, Jeremy. It's your yeah, time. Okay. This it's, is an old yeah. friend of mine, uh, Elvis. Elvis worked for the promoter at our last show. I believe it was in uh, the last time we played in Kiev. Correct. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Nice, to, nice to meet you, Elvis. When was it? Give us a date. Oh, a year. Nice. 12 years ago, more than yeah, that. Yeah, it was 20, it was 2013. It was August 2013. It was Kiev, yeah. August 2013. So yeah, nine years ago. Oh, crazy, crazy, oh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah guys. It happens, it happens a lot. lot. <laughs> okay, so thank you for joining the stream. We are uh, you, the, the our last, uh, well, the first guest we had tonight uh, was Antje, and she is uh, from Berlin, but she is she makes delivery. She brings supplies from Berlin into uh like to the border and across the border into ukraine uh and she told us uh about how that was going if uh our fundraiser is uh well our fundraiser will be successful because we've already raised 2400 euros we are going to be uh, using that to purchase body armor and sending it across the border uh most likely with her and she was the first guest the next guest was uh yulia who is, uh, lives in Berlin also, but only moved there six years ago from Ukraine. Her family is still there. She explained to us what is going on. And this is Elvis, who is actually in Ukraine right now. You're in the suburbs of Kiev right now, correct? Uh, kind of, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, very cool stream. And thanks for having me. Thanks for you making donations. Thank you for, and thank you for coming donations. on. So, yeah, thank yeah, you. I'm, uh yeah i i was in kiev like months ago so i spent there like two days i believe like yeah i was like um in suburbs of kiev like 20 kilometers away from kiev when everything started so after everything started actually but then like uh to two days i left kiev and i'm like 200 kilometers away from kiev but still it's kind of the situation is still, still the same not that active like bombing but still we have like air raid sirens like 10 times a day or so and uh like last week we had like uh, a, a rocket that bombed a, a military object here so yeah it's been a month already i can't believe so it, it seems like it's, it's a week already it, it's only a week past but we've been living here for a month in this crazy situation crazy yeah, yeah. so the situation here so yeah uh what I'm surprised at that the cities and little little towns like they try to lead the normal life, so they do not stop. They do not do not like um, kind of like freeze in fear, like oh my god, we're gonna die now. This is this is war. No, they're just like trying to go to like trying to stick a daily routine, like go to work, like uh, I don't know, like do normal things because like have to keep the economy spinning all the time. So. Yeah, this is these are the good news. So night, so everything's happening overnight. So night is kind of dangerous time. There's like more air raid sirens, and like it's sometimes it's difficult to get you to to bed all the time because like you're like still awake till four a.m. Mm. And like when you don't have like like I don't know, like energy to still awake, you just like. A, just like fall asleep and, yeah, and what i thought was a very moving video uh was sent to us um about an hour before the stream that we just showed where uh, a model we actually know uh who is still in kiev was showing us uh well not only did she uh have uh, uh get us some statements from soldiers but showed us the bomb shelter like it appeared to me to be a homemade bomb shelter that she has set up 
where she says she spends most of her time because you know, the city is, you know, in, in 2022, a European city is being constantly bombed, which I yeah still. Yeah, this says, so yeah, the, these these kind of bomb shelters the, she showed, like it's it's more about, it looks like, it's not like a professional bomb shelter. It's It looks like she's living in a house somewhere and the, she has that, like a Atlantic? room underneath like the house, like in the ground floor, like, minus one floor or something and okay. she's still not 100 percent safe as well because like now we have uh kind of rocket like an air air attack so like uh, rockets they fly and, and these these things like they're destroying everything so if if we take like uh high rise which is kind of 15 15 f floors like 20 floors and one missile one missile like hits it takes away five five floors like if, if it hits from one side like it takes five floors so imagine like a, a house and like a two floor house like minus one floor like ground floor or something like you have a garage here one side hits the, that hits means the it doesn't house. make a difference where you're sleeping yeah <laughs> exactly so yeah. if you have like we, we have a lot of like these instructions how, what, what to do and where to sleep if you stay in the bathroom maybe like in the room which is between two two walls uh, from our from our outside and like a lot of instructions yet we understand like if it if it hits like it hits so, <laughs> so mm. but, uh, yeah and and what was uh, these instructions what uh, are you do what what do they want you to do where do you yeah what what was it so the instructions like when you hear air raid siren it means like until it so when you hear it like uh, the sound of the siren it means it's a safe time when it stops it's not safe uh since the, the time it stop and maybe like 20 to hour 20 mm. minutes to hour like to 60 minutes so like, it's talking cover was what they always used to, to teach over here in school like when you heard that, that siren yeah when you hear siren it, it's a safe time to 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 take shelter i mean yes and ironically that also we were expecting the russians back in the 50s and 60s <laughs> they were like talking yeah. cover and like in the 50s you know you can see i i i been to them uh there are not a lot of them around now but you would have these bomb shelters that you know for when uh you know the cold war erupted you could go in there but it does not this does not look like like what we're seeing on these videos what we saw from the video from Valeri does not look like you know a, a 50 style bomb shelter designed mm -hmm. to protect you from nuclear attack it looked like she took you know some some blankets and some supplies into her own basement i mean yeah i'm sitting in my basement right now yeah mm -hmm. bombs are going off i would not feel particularly safe down here Sure. I mean, so, more yeah, the house is going to collapse on top of me. Yeah, but we were we were warned about we were warned uh, maybe like uh, two weeks before it started. So uh, we got warnings from uh, from all over like mass media that uh, like they're going to attack us, and and they we were given like instructions what to do. Probably like save some food for three five days uh like save some gasoline maybe we maybe some of us will have to like leave the city or something so yeah that helps a lot because like I, I was quite skeptical about it and like even when everybody said like that the february 16 would be like the day when they attacked so i was on no way not happening but yeah somehow like i i, I packed the bag of food for three five days and uh, like i uh, bought some gasoline so i could like i know drive like 100 miles away from, from where i am what was and uh yeah it didn't help a little bit so okay and but before the attack what story did uh did russia give to ukraine as to what was going on like the, i mean the story again this is not a, a russia bashing stream at all but you know the story that what you get from listening to uh the Putin is he needs to come in to liberate the Russian speaking peoples of Ukraine from the neo Nazi government, uh, there, which just happens to be run by a Jewish president. Yeah. Well, yeah. so you have to understand that, like, it has been eight years of, the war, of war between Ukraine and Russia already, but he was, uh, like saying that he would be probably doing some more attacks on the east of the country like on that territory where he was already 
so like in Donbass or something. So there was I was expecting everything to start there. So it's kind of thousand kilometers away from from Kiev, something. So it was like a normal thing for everybody. Nobody expected that. So and uh, even uh, when everything started, well, not not the one before. So uh, maybe two weeks before, he started all these like military trains uh, like along the borders. So it was a like a surprise when he started like the train with the Belarus, which was like close to Kiev and from northern side of Ukraine, not the eastern side. So that was kind of surprising. And uh, also, like we noticed that all embassies left Ukraine, so all Western Europe being countries like left Ukraine, so UK, the UK, like USA, so the whole European countries, like embassies, like they, they left. Only China left, and it's the only China state in Ukraine, I believe. So yeah, embassies leaving. So it was like quite, quite uh, strange. And uh, but but inside the country, so everybody was everybody was like quite convinced that so oh nothing's gonna happen, you know. So um, President like Zelensky like said, oh no, it's not gonna happen. Come on, he's just like playing. It's nothing gonna happen. We are ready to 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 stay here and please be be calm. Not, nothing's gonna happen. So yeah, this is how how <laughs> strange things. Yeah, train train with Belarus like along the the northern border and like the embassies leaving Ukraine. So this is this was a strange thing. Me. Mm, I see. Yeah, thanks for for pointing that out um, and answering Jared's question. Um, I would like to to ask you because it's an um, opportunity for me to to speak to um, yeah to people who are live right there where yeah where suffering is and uh, bad situations happen. Um, and the question is, I think it's an it's an easy question, but maybe it's not hard to answer. So. Uh, what are you expecting maybe from the next day so do you said you are you are pretending to to have a normal day with working and keep the econo economy up and something like that um we, we all we, we are hearing your story and it's super sad you want we want to help you so therefore Jared and i putting up those uh, this the stream here uh, and raising some money and uh, we are we are uh, yeah asking for body armors that was uh, Jared's idea by the way and um, i think it's a good idea so what what do you think what do you need what do you think about the next days um please give us an uh, yeah a few of your um, thoughts that would be nice uh well very grateful that you're raising money for body armors and to like humanitarian aid the military aid this thank you very much again uh as for me like like i don't need anything like i have food i have like place to live i have like everything i have like remote work right now what do i expect like in two like three weeks from here i don't know they say like the experts local experts say like we're not gonna we're finishing the war 100%, yet we're expecting some like negotiations and it might stop somehow and like they might be leaving somehow, I don't know. So I want to I wanna be like in, in like perfect scenario, like in a week, I would like to go back to Kiev to kind of normal life. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I think like it's not that possible, like <laughs> 100% real. Uh, I think uh, that the war might might take from like I know two eight weeks. I don't think it will take like longer. I think two months like it's realistic. And by the by Ju by June by July maybe no, it, it might end. Mm -hmm. so, right now I'm, I'm safe, man. I'm, I I I can go to the supermarket and buy myself like food, like water. I don't know like I have I have. Like I have remote work, like I'm doing the same thing I used to do, like before the war, and kind of, yeah, it's not that comfortable. <laughs> but yeah, sure. Somehow, like st well, we're still alive. It's fine. The it's Russians fine. are just going to keep pounding and pounding and pounding and losing more and more soldiers. Eventually, they'll think, okay, well, I guess we've made our point, whatever that was, and we'll be willing to negotiate, or they're just not gonna not gonna stop until either they have destroyed everything or they have drawn NATO into a fight and then actually started World War III. 
Well, what what we know, what we, what we have been told, like they are running out of ammo right now. So like they run, so they privilege is a, like they have much more planes than we do. So they are like good in attacking, like from 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 the sky. So now they are running out of ammo, and like they know how to do how how to navigate inside Ukraine, and the motivation is quite low in the Russian army. So all the people, all these like young soldiers that come in, like fresh soldiers, they don't know what to do. Like they yeah, they they killing civilians that that stuff but they are getting killed like next day so the like they are they're dying like like massively dying here and um yeah i think like the motivation among the soldiers is of the russian army is like the, the next big thing so it's gonna go down to the floor nobody will be joining the russian forces or something unless like the russian propaganda will like play another trick yeah, well, it um, seems like from what I from what we're able to see here in the video, in the images we get here is you know obviously the Ukrainian army is motivated. You're protecting your your own your home. You know yeah. what is going to be more motivational than that? Meanwhile, the motivation that they're giving to the Russian army is yeah. Um, I think there's some neo Nazis hanging out in that maternity hospital over there, so you better attack it. Mm -hmm. but it just seems like your motivation is hundreds of times more. Than what the what would be what they're telling and what they're using to motivate the the Russian army. Yeah, and now uh, so now if if you wanna if a regular Ukrainian wants to join the Ukrainian army now it's a like it's a delay. Uh, so there is a six Ukrainians that want to join one uh, like free place in the Ukrainian yeah. army. So you, you understand there are six to uh, against one place. Yeah. So there, there's a need for one. I don't know if there's a draft in Russia, yeah. but I can't imagine a lot of, of uh, Russians are volunteering to go over and and get killed because they think that there's there's neo Nazis hanging out behind orphanages. Yeah, and uh, what 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 uh, what else we have been saying? Well, we have been told here from uh, like military local military military experts that. Uh, ever since school with motivation and everybody wants to defend yet probably in like i don't know two three months we will be facing the problem of like uh, technical problems so we will run out of tanks and probably like machines and helicopters and stuff so they're trying to negotiate with like western countries to give like to, to sell to give i don't know the handover like planes old planes like probably like around soviet era that are quite familiar that I would like playing. Well, I'm guessing your uh, pilots are going to be going to be familiar with like the, with the older MiGs, yeah. From, yeah, Soviet era MiGs. I don't think so. Yeah, right now, right now we we are facing like um, the, the forecast of like two months probably. Like this, that that would be great. Like if in two months it ends, and um, how how the rest of the diplomacy between russia and western world like works that's that's another question mm -hmm. and yeah, well, I'm, I'm willing to bet like not, not a lot of western countries are going to want to do business with russia anymore except i guess russia doesn't really care because even though we've cut them off and said okay well we're going to boycott that we're going to put these crippling sanctions on them mm -hmm. they're still buying a billion dollars a day of russian oil so unless unless america is willing to to cut its addiction to Russian oil and the rest of the, the world. And Germany, I still think, gets 40% of its oil from Russia. So if Putin's still getting a billion dollars a day into his war chest, I don't think the sanctions are going to do shit. But that, yeah. that's just my opinion. In any case, um, this uh, this stream, our, our, our point here is because when I asked um, some of our other Ukrainian friends what was most desperately needed over there, sorry about that, what was most desperately needed uh, on the ground there, they had told me it was helmets and body armor. So, and that's difficult to find in the area over there. There's no more available in Ukraine. There's no more available in Poland. There may be some we can find in in Germany. If we can't find it in Germany, I'll source it over in America and send it over. But there are there may be some people watching this stream that are even more pacifistic than uh, not wanting to get body armor. So, uh, Elvis, my question is: Do you have any uh, any organizations where it would be good to send any donations for anybody that doesn't want to, uh, that doesn't feel that body armor is uh, is an appropriate uh, uh, use of the money? 
uh yeah we have this uh probably like I, i've shared a link with you so these are like the two links like one for military help and second mm -hmm. okay, I, I do have these links if i send them to you uh Krogi, can you get those into the chat yeah okay so what one of them is for military help the second there is like for humanitarian so mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's good that's good i will bring them in the chat and i will do a youtube clip or YouTube video from our conversation as well, and I will bring them, uh, yeah, under the video, and people can click on it. Yeah, that's 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 nice. Okay, um, yeah, and maybe more <laughs> a little bit more easier questions. Um, what is the situation in the supermarkets right now? Do you can get anything you need, or is is there a lack of of supplies, or what is the situa situation? Right now where i am at like 200 kilometers away from from the capital city i might get everything i want so like literally they they already started to sell beer like mm. like two days ago like you said okay if if we are safe if we are that safe come on let's 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 work like it used to be no hard alcohol no vodka no whiskey mm -hmm. but we can sell beers like okay, they sell beers i can buy whatever i want like bread like i don't know Fruits, vegetables, fish, meats, like people from from suburbs, like from like private, like entrepreneurs, like they have farms and stuff. Like bring like I don't know, chicken, like pork, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever okay. you want. You help so, help each other. Two links. Uh, they're both through the official go official uh, government of the Bank of Ukraine. So if um, if uh, you feel you can, uh, Elvis, if you feel we can trust. The official bank of the ukraine not to be corrupt then yeah. these are two links uh one is for military aid one is for humanitarian aid mm -hmm. yeah I, I, yeah it's 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 already said it's it's safe 100 i believe so even even me like i, I i'm donating to army like to through, through this uh, bank account because like i see i see a lot of like messages like we need help we need help and they send like i ban digits and numbers and like they show like the credit card numbers, please send money here. But I do not know those people. You know, if I know the guy who's like in the military, in the army now, and I can text him, say, mate, do you really need those money to, to, to buy yourself? Like, I don't know, something like to upgrade to your Kalashnikov or something. Like if he says, yes, it's hunk send me. So, okay, I, I'm donating this money. If somebody else, like, no, I'll trust like official organizations so only. So in this, in this, like, <laughs> historical moment like i don't think like they do weird things because like they, they they you can see like they let's hope they, not let's hope huh? not let's hope oh. not yeah <laughs> yeah this the, the horrible things happening in the east like mariupol kharkiv and um like assume it this is this is the region that putting hope to get the, for, for, uh, the first place so uh, during these like eight years, like since the war started, so he he expected those regions to become like Russia, without like any 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 Russian soldier like killing anyone there. So he thought like he if when he his like military troops like entering those regions, and so he expected the Ukrainians living there, so meeting them with like. Bottle of vodka and say welcome back yeah, home. It seems like he expected the Russian army to be welcomed as liberators, and you know, and then when they showed up there and they start getting shot back at people or they're invading their land, it's like he didn't know what to do. And now it's not like he can't just back out without saving face and having the the Russian army look like a bunch of jackasses. So I, I don't, I just don't think Putin really knows what to do now, and I think he would rather. Rather than look like an asshole, he probably rather would start a nuclear war. Really, yeah, right? it's very, yeah. It's very sad. Yeah, I think I think like he has been robbed because like all the eight years, like since the, the war started, like he has been told like that everything's good, like and he has been like giving away money to all his generals, like and, and polit politic politicians, like you guys come on, do you think here's the billion bucks, here's the million, here's another hundred million bucks. You guys buy everything there and make like everything happen so the ukraine is invaded like rights like 
easily. So and nothing happened. It means like there's a huge corruption around him, and like all this military money he's like giving away <laughs> to his generals are being are being stolen. You know. <laughs> so this, this <laughs> is. What, it reminds me of America going in like you know the the, the these Middle Eastern countries where you know our our government promises weapons of mass destruction, and then you get in there and America you know the the, the mightiest military in the world a uh, military budget the more than the next seventeen countries combined yeah. we go in there with the most modern army in the world and our mortal enemies are kicking the crap out of us. With the AK forty seven, yeah, uh, uh, they're killing us with, with seven year old technology is destroying us. And when I look at the images of guys in John Deere's running off with armored personnel characters stealing tanks, reminds me of uh, reminds me of that. But you know, this time it's the uh, the Russian army at yeah. Jackass. <laughs> The Russians, Russian government, yeah, not the Americans. Yeah, that's yeah. But uh, guys, by the way, um, we got some new donations here, and we have two thousand eight hundred bucks, which is cool. awesome. Thank you very much. Vielen, vielen Dank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you all the viewers watching too. Everybody donating, and let me just uh, uh, reassure you that this money will be going directly to body owners. It will going be going directly to protect. Uh, the Ukrainians. Uh, each one of the each piece of body armor that you are buying for the Ukrainians is going to protect somebody from a bullet or from a piece of shrapnel. So thank you very much. Yeah, vielen vielen Dank. Es sind 56 Prozent. Das ist Wahnsinn. Thanks a lot. Okay, and uh, even when this stream is over, the uh, donation will continue to go for the next six days. After which, we will directly source the body armor and get it directly to Ukraine. That's right. Yeah. And I will um yeah, after after this uh, discussion here, after this talk, I will uh, do a music stream and uh, raising some money as well. Um you can um, make a song request. I will try it uh, to play with my drum set and uh, do my support uh, in playing some music. Um Elvis, thank you very much. I hope uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, for for now, uh, for you and your family, um, much strength and um, yeah, mental health. Uh, obviously, that is important too, because these are hard times, uh, depressing times. Um, uh, I think it was uh, no, it was it wasn't Antje, but the other girl, the the, um, the Julia. Name? Julia, Julia, for sure, Julia, Julia's name. She said, uh, "Yeah, we have our humor and uh, we have our, our will to to get it get it on together." And uh, I wish you the same. Uh, that was um, kind of impressing. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your um, yeah impressions with us. And yeah, um, Mike, you and the yeah. Ukrainian people have shown how strong and, and, and single minded of purpose and will that uh, you are. And hopefully, this will all be over very, very soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, and thanks for all the good things you're doing, like for like, raising donations and sending to, to Ukrainian, Ukraine. And uh, thanks for helping out. And hope to talk to you after we win and everything, after everything ends. So yeah, yeah hopefully. Evening, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Let, let, let us meet then. <laughs> yeah, sure, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, will, we will bring beer. Cool. Yes. <laughs> we are going to meet up in Kiev yeah. and celebrate your victory. Good yeah. deal. Okay, good. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great evening. Bye bye. Have a good okay. evening. Bye bye. Julia, natürlich, Julia, sorry, ich, für mich ist das, das nimmt mich auch alles mit. Ich muss einmal kurz sagen, ich finde das sehr bewegend. Äh, und äh, Jared, are you still here? Ja, 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 äh, sorry, ja. Es ist, äh, und natürlich, Julia, sorry, ich wollte, ich habe dich nicht vergessen, aber ich ist für mich echt schwer, gerade an äh, solche Sachen zu machen, weil das einfach echte Dinge sind. Das sind keine Videospiele, es ist keine Musik, es ist kein Bullshit. Es passiert einfach und das ist schwer. So, das ist, das ist schwer für mich. Aber ich finde es schön, dass wir, dass wir heute alle ein bisschen sprechen können. Okay, so uh, I said to everyone on Instagram that the stream on Twitch is just about over. So this is your last couple of minutes to get over there to twitch.tv backslash Krogman and make your donations. Uh, 100% of the money is going to go into body armor to go straight to the Ukrainians. Every piece of body armor, every helmet that you buy is going to stop a bullet or a piece of 
shrapnel from killing a Ukrainian. So please, now is not the time to be cheap. Right now, we already have 2,805 euros. Uh, this is the first day of our telethon. The telethon goes on for another six uh, for another six days. But Kogi's going to be on his own from now because it's his stream. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jared. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a usual thing to talk such uh, serious topics here, to be honest. It's the first time I'm doing that um, for a wider audience. And to be honest, it's, uh, it's a strange feeling, but yeah, it, it, it is happening. And I think, Jared, it's good that we will, yeah, that we are doing something and... Um, that you have those connections and we can talk with them and maybe help at least just a little bit and raise in some I mean, awareness I mean, don't, too. Don't, don't let helping us stop you from helping in any other way possible. Uh, my, my battery is showing me that the computer is about to dead. So if I get if I get to get cut off, it just means that the computer died on me. Not All right. Yeah, no, no, no worries. No worries. Um, I think we have talk the most uh, things that is, you pointed it out, that is not a, this stream here is not about bashing people the, the stream is about helping each other and maybe uh, finding into a new humanitarian love or whatever i have no idea but um i want to point out and make clear that we are here that that the, the, that the best thing is then when when people are not in, yeah, in well, circumstances of war yeah on the other foot and like say china was bombing russia right and they were bombing uh, maternity hospitals in Russia, then yeah, we would probably be sending uh, we'd probably be sending body armor to Russia. But that is not the case now. That is right. Yeah, that is right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good. good well, not good. to choose sides here, but when civilians are getting shot, you know, they, it, it just I, I just feel that you, the best thing we can do is, is to send them something to help them protect themselves. Yeah. Okay. Um... Jared, I would say before your uh, battery is down, I just your battery is down. <laughs> okay, that guys, where's the where's the camera? <laughs> okay. So, Jared, if you can hear me, thank you very much for doing this support stream with me. Thank you very much to our guests. And um, yeah, dear viewers, thank you very much for supporting this stream and of course the Ukrainian people by donating. And we already got 2,870 euros. Um, yeah, now I have the hard task to find the right words for the end of this, yeah, for this end of the support stream, and I'm not, I'm not pretty sure if I, I am able to find them. Um, as I said to, to our guests, I wish you all the best, um, all the best, and um, I wish you strength and mental health and a good time. And keep in mind that that it's better to make yeah the famous word it's better to make love than war and therefore that is my last word all the best thank you very much um you will find this video on my youtube channel as well and the donation uh, link is ready to go for the next six days and afterwards jared will find a, find a way to um get some body armors and bring them to the ukraine in which way any possible i have no idea uh, but we will point it out how we will achieve that and it's important that you will see what we are gonna do the next step uh, i will um, talk about it here in the stream as well and i will do an instagram uh, update and yeah thanks a lot and nun auf deutsch weil es mir äh, auch nicht so leicht fällt wie ihr merkt ähm, erstens über so ein Thema zu reden, das alles auch in Englisch so rüberzubringen, wie man sich das dann eigentlich auch vorstellt. Ich mache die Kamera mal ein bisschen kleiner, sonst fühle ich mich hier sehr auf dem Präsentierteller. Muss ich sagen, ich weiß gar nicht, warum das Bild gerade so ist. Moment. So. Erstmal, ähm, 
Jared, vielen Dank, dass du ähm, das hier heute auch irgendwie in die, Wege geleitet, äh, gleich, äh, ge in die Wege geleitet hast. Ich muss auch mal atmen, weil das irgendwie krass ist. Ähm, mich bewegt es sehr, was wir heute gesehen haben. Ich habe dann nicht damit gerechnet, dass wir auch ja, so nah rankommen an diese ganze Thematik, weil wenn man sich damit auseinandersetzt, ob man in der Öffentlichkeit, wie viele Leute es doch immer mitkriegen mögen, aber es ist ja irgendwie jetzt schon die Öffentlichkeit, wenn man sich darüber unterhalten möchte, dann ist es manchmal schwierig, A, den richtigen Ton zu finden, B, auch nicht komplett blind über Themen zu reden. Und da fehlt mir auch jetzt in Hinsicht oder im Hinblick auf politische Themen fehlt mir letzten Endes auch die Bildung und das Feingespür und äh, so kann ich nicht richtig mitreden. Aber ich finde es super wichtig und deswegen auch umso besser, dass wir heute Gäste hatten, die berichten konnten. Und das ist auf jeden Fall total geil und wo wir uns ja wohl alle sicher sein können, egal wer, welche Nation, welcher Mensch, was auch immer, wenn sowas wie ein Krieg irgendwo herrscht, dann ist es toll, wenn es Leute, die es nicht betrifft, irgendwie zusammenhalten und und irgendwie versuchen, was, was dafür, was dagegen zu tun. Und ähm, ich möchte jetzt hier nicht äh, diesen Stream äh, jetzt jedes Mal als äh, Moralstream darstellen, sondern ich fand es einfach auch wichtig, heute mal sowas zu machen. Das wirklich nicht so leicht ist, aber einfach mal zu sagen, Mensch, ja, es ist irgendwie alles ätzend. Es ist, man hat es heute festgestellt, wie nah das alles ist. Und auch mal von anderen Medien sowas mitzubekommen, weil man selber natürlich auch denkt, naja, es ist alles so weit weg, es, man sieht Dinge in, in den Nachrichten und was ist denn da alles los. Aber es ist einfach wahr und dementsprechend fand ich es auch wichtig, nicht immer wegzugucken, sondern auch mal zu sagen, ähm, hier einfach mal die Reichweite anders zu nutzen. Und das ist überhaupt nicht mal naturell. Ich bin viel lieber jemand, der sich hier zum Affen macht und für anderen Leuten irgendwie eine gute Zeit beschert, als darauf hinzuweisen, was gerade nicht gut läuft. Das ist überhaupt nicht das, ähm, was mir persönlich irgendwie gut gefällt, aber hier Jared ist gerade auch im Chat. Aber ich glaube, es war mal an der Zeit, das zu tun und äh, dementsprechend werde ich gleich versuchen, auch mit einem harten Break einfach hier Musik zu spielen und gar nicht mehr darüber viel zu verlieren. Ey, wir haben die 3000 Euro gespendet, äh, geknackt. Ihr habt die 3000 Euro gespendet. Jared, we have already 3005 Euros, which equals 60%, which is awesome. Und ich werde gleich einfach diesen Stream weiterführen und äh, musizieren, meinen ganz normalen Drum Mittwoch machen und normalen Anführungszeichen. Ich werde die äh, Farben so lassen und äh, euch wissen lassen, dass eben all das, was ihr euch dann eben wünscht, an Musik auch eben in dieses Spendenkonto einzahlt. Und der Konto bleibt also an. Ich lasse jetzt, ich drücke jetzt bei YouTube auf Ende. Ich mache die YouTube, ich beende die YouTube-Aufnahme. Chat, wenn ihr noch was äh, sagen wollt dann schreiben wollt, dann könnt ihr es jetzt tun. Äh, ansonsten, also ich lasse nochmal ganz kurz stehen, werde ich jetzt den auch nochmal auf Deutsch, ne? ich habe es eben auch nochmal auf Englisch gesagt, ich werde euch auf den Laufenden halten, was mit den Spenden pass passiert, weil das ist mir sehr wichtig. Ich kenne auch von anderen Aktionen, wo Leute irgendwie aus Aktionismus äh, Spenden gesammelt haben oder Ware gesammelt haben, Nahrungsmittel, Kleidung und dann ist hinterher nicht mehr wirklich aufgelöst worden, was passiert denn damit letzten Endes und das ist überhaupt nicht geil. Das bedeutet, selbst wenn es jetzt hier irgendwie Probleme geben sollte, das glaube ich nicht, aber man weiß es nicht, dann werde ich das euch mitteilen, hier im Stream oder bei Instagram, so wo halt meine Kanäle sind, dass ihr einfach Bescheid wisst, weil, ähm, das hier ist wirklich nichts, das ist nicht dafür gedacht, damit Jared und ich heute sagen können, wow, wir haben aber heute für unser Image was Tolles gemacht, sondern das hier hat dann, dann das, ist, das ist nicht der Fall, dann würden wir was anders machen, dann würden wir, weiß ich nicht, wir können auch, wir können andere Dinge besser, ihr merkt, wie schwer ich mich tue an diesen Sachen. Es geht darum einfach, dass man was machen will und äh, das ist der Plan. So, jetzt habe ich aber genug gesagt. Ich drücke auf Stopp bei YouTube. Der Chat hatte nochmal ein letztes Wort. Ihr habt was reingeschrieben. Vielen, vielen Dank an unsere Gäste. Alles Liebe. Ähm, ich drücke auf äh, Aufnahme beenden und das YouTube-Video gibt es wahrscheinlich dann direkt morgen. So.